Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my demographic presentation for Fort Hayes on the Goddard School District. So this is my case study. Um, my name is Angie Locke. Thank you for watching. I just thought I'd share a little bit with you about our district. So let's move on to slide number one. You're not gonna be able to see this very well. I apologize for that. I played with the lighting in here for quite a while and couldn't get it to show up better. So let me just tell you what's on there and we'll talk about it. First of all, the Goddard population, we're a small rural community with only 4,256 people who live here. Um, and the racial statistics are 77.8% white right now, 9.9% .9 Hispanic, two or more races, 4.7%, black 3.3, and American Indian at 1.3 and Asian at 3%. So we are primarily, our demographic is primarily Caucasian um, and I don't see that changing a whole lot. Um, our land area in this little town is only 4.49 square miles, so it's pretty small. Um, there are seven churches, however, in that area. Um, and the economy, as of 2012, 75.9% of this population over the age of 16 was working and in the labor force. So the Goddard School District has in its enrollment 5,673 students. If you can imagine, we have this tiny little town and we host students from quite a large district area. We have 11 schools. Um, we have 353 teachers employed in our district. The student teacher ratio is 16 to one. So pretty good. The student body gender-wise is 52.5% male and 47.5% female. So our gender um, split is almost pretty even. Um, our English language learners are 4.5% of our student body. Students with learning disabilities are 14.4% of our student body. In our quality of education, our district is ranked 78 out of 364 in Kansas and I think that's pretty good. I'm, I'm really proud of that. I love working here. So our school organization and climate, as you can see I mentioned we have 11 schools and if you look up here you can see grades K through 4 we've got five schools just dedicated to elementary school age and then we have two intermediate schools, Challenger and Discovery, two middle schools, Eisenhower Middle School and Goddard Middle School and then we have essentially two regular high schools and then we have the Goddard Academy which is an alternative high school that sits right next to the high school I work in in Goddard High School. Our attendance rate is pretty high 95.2 percent. Our graduation rate is at 90.4 percent and our dropout rate is only at 0.5. I want to talk about the climate a little bit in the district. I love the climate here. It's very much a family atmosphere. Um, everyone treats everyone else as family and that's a buzzword that you'll hear in staff meetings and administration Whenever we get together they talk about that and when I was in new teacher training They folded their arms around me as part of the family. I love that So that's part of the the attitude in our district The other thing that I love and I'll mention later again at the end of the presentation is that our district engages in capturing kids hearts which is a program that um, enhances healthy relationships from students with their teachers and it establishes collaborative agreements of acceptable behavior. So we do things like we shake the hands of our students as they come through the door, we do social contracts for each and every classroom individually. Uh, so that's part of it and uh, we do good things at the beginning of every class. So we start off with a positive attitude and I think that positivity has really spread through the district. We've gotten really good feedback from our students. Um, so let's move on. Our student background information, to be more specific, as you can see, our, I mentioned that our race and ethnicity, 83.1, um, Hispanic is 8.2, 7.2, and 1.4. So we are predominantly a white um, population here. English language learners, the ELL students are 99.64% and non-ELL 0.36%. Our socioeconomic status is the non-economically disadvantaged outweigh the economically disadvantaged. We have 72.64 to 27.36%. We do see a, a fair amount of students who are economically disadvantaged. It feels higher than that to me, but that's what the statistics would show. Again, the gender is about split. Students with disabilities, 
Um, 82.8% of our students do not have disabilities or not on an IEP or a 504. So I wanted to mention that article that we read, Finding Diversity in the Classroom, it, as it addresses the rural, rural schools and populations. And I just wanted to say that we're growing with increasing diversity as we add more foreign exchange students and our student and staff population increases in racial, ethnic, and sexual orientation diversity. I think we're becoming more and more tolerant every year and more actually looking forward to it as a student body. I feel that from the students that they like having people that are different from them. They're very tolerant here. The students have really good hearts overall. Also, um, in that article, it emphasized how students' personhood when exiting the classroom as opposed to when they entered it. That really struck me powerfully as I work with the idea of diversity and I want my students to feel changed in that regard when they exit my classroom. I like that how that aligns really beautifully with that other article, Education and a Changing Society, when they said that the emphasis is less about the teaching than it is about the learning. And that really is backwards from where I was last year as a brand new teacher. I've changed, I've mellowed in that regard. I feel like I'm understanding more that my role is to pull things out of their students and have them be responsible for their learning, even though I'm a facilitator and I bring that teaching to them. So. I'm so much more about what I plan for them to engage in and to work for and to take away than I am about spoon feeding them factual information, even though there is some of that too. Uh, collaboration and nurturing a learning community. That's what I learned about in that article that Kushner, or I guess it was the textbook, chapter one of Kushner. I like the idea of the third wave system and all of us giving and receiving knowledge in a cooperative, envir cooperative environment. And that hit me hard as a truth that I already sort of knew in my heart, but I liked reading it in print and being validated in that. I love how he said, because I feel this all the time, but he said everyone in the school, both adults and students, may serve as resources to one another. And I feel that every day I have a student teach me something new. I have a girl who's my library science student and she teaches me something new about computers every day. And as I'm teaching her things about how to run the library and global librarianship. So I love that reciprocity that we have. As far as student academic information, we have in our district, as opposed to the state, in our MAP performance level reports, we're at 42.1% in 2015 and 41.1% of what the state is, 44 and 39 and 2016, so we're pretty, pretty like on target with what the state's expectations or what where they're running. In terms of English proficiency, uh, we're running at 34.84% and 34.52. The levels go up. Um, this is elementary school up into high school. So the levels you can see just line up pretty well or pretty close to what the state standards are. I did not find any information in our district. So my next slide addresses that about social studies and uh, science. They did, don't do district statistics for that. I couldn't find them on the KSDE website or any Goddard site anywhere. So I apologize for that. I did my library research and just couldn't come up with an answer for that, even though I sought out my resources from the district. So that is that. Our educational op options, educational placement. I'm really proud of our district. Um, we have, like I mentioned before, the Goddard Academy, and they have online services, so kids can go over there and take classes online at their own pace. That's one of the options that they have. Um, <clears throat> and they could do that either full-time or part-time. I have one of my students just transferred over there half the day. So in the morning I have her in psychology and my class, and then the, the afternoon she goes over to the academy. So that's an option that the kids have. Another option is individual students are bused to the other building, like I have one of my students who takes an advanced computer class and she goes over to Eisenhower High School for that as an alternative because we don't offer the same level of class. So we have some reciprocity with Eisenhower. Also individual students can take dual credit classes through Newman University and through Wichita Area Technical College, one of which I teach, which is psychology. We have gifted pullout services that are implemented in the building and special needs environments are provided through the SPED department offices and the classrooms. 
In terms of learning accommodations, we have a lot. We have a really great special ed department here and I've seen all of these things put into play here. We have extended time on assignments. We simplify complex directions. We reduce the reading level of assignments. We allow typewritten or computer assignments as an alternative to handwritten things. We provide opportunities for independent study or library research. We allow the student an extra set of books to keep at home, and I know very well about that since I'm a librarian and I keep track of all the textbooks, but that's a real option. Um, conference regularly with the student concerning their needs, production, and evaluation of progress. They can be isolated from other students if they need to, if they're very distracted easily. The special ed teachers, they have a special room where they have headphones available and students can come and calm down and, and isolate themselves. Or as teachers, we can send them to a special place that we have designated ahead of time with their um, in-school caregivers and paras and those special ed paraprofessionals. So either during class time itself or during a testing time, they're able to do that. Or they could sit near the teacher for support. We have the option of grading on the content not so much on the handwriting or the spelling as an option. We can require fewer responses from them on a test, like on a multiple choice. That's one of the accommodations that is out there. And we can provide a study guide for them as well. As far as testing accommodations, some of that runs together with the learning accommodations, but they can get extended time on tests. They can give credit for their oral presentations as an alternative to written tests. That's been something that I've used in the past or offered. Uh, give frequent quizzes as opposed to long exams. Sometimes our kids with challenges need things broken up into smaller chunks. We can allow the student to have a sample or a practice test. We can give the written exam orally. We can give take home tests. We can use additional objective items. In other words, less essay questions. And we can permit the student to take end of chapter unit or level test initially to free time for special assignments. Possible gifted intervention can be used for that. 